The sonar pings at a steady pace of once every 10 seconds as we careen through the deep waters like a torpedo towards the northwest tip of Russia. I listen and watch the screen, but I'm not expecting to see anything in particular, but it's my duty, so I take it seriously. Oftentimes in the deep ocean, it's easy to get distracted. You know, we strike up good conversations when the captain's in his quarters, but I always keep an eye on the ball, so to speak, an ear to the wall. Just in case anything happens, I need to be the first to know about it. So once we got up to Russia, we had our orders. We were to track a Russian Navy ballistic missile submarine and monitor their activity. It was a big deal. The Russians were of the understanding that the U.S. had pulled their ships from the Barents Sea in an attempt to improve the relationship between Russia and the U.S., but I guess that trust wasn't 100% there because, well, there we were. And my job became enormously important. I was joined by four other sonar specialists so that no mistakes could be made. And at 105 nautical miles off the north shore of Murmansk, the Russian sub was performing combat training while speeding towards the border to international waters. And this, of course, sent red flags all the way up command. The Cold War had just ended two years before, but as far as the military was concerned, that meant next to nothing. We would be on our toes for another three years, easy, just in case they decided to try something sneaky. But all things considered, the Barents Sea is a shallow sea. So we sat just about 74 meters underneath the surface, which is about 20 yards short of a football field. Now that may sound deep, but when you consider the size of these ships and the speed that they're traveling at, 74 meters is just scratching the surface. So we're following this U-boat out towards international waters, keeping a close tail of about five nautical miles, when all of a sudden, all hell breaks loose. The sub starts to turn right at the border. She shoots off to the left. And none of us know what's about to happen. None of us really know what we're in for. So I report to my commanding officer and everyone erupts into a, a well-structured frenzy. It's a drastic, sharp turn in these shallow waters and it creates all sorts of noise. All the crashing waves on the surface and the rippling currents made from the boat below is throwing off all the machines. And then bam, just like that, she disappears. What do you mean disappeared? I don't know, sir. It's all static. I can't pick anything out in this mess. Find me that ship! The commanding officer barks the order to pick up pace and we shoot off towards the spot where the Russian ship was last seen. And I start to panic. So I'm on the verge of a meltdown because we are two very large ships filled with lots of people. And for all I know, we are likely headed into an ambush. How did a ship like that just disappear? So I'm glued to my machine, watching, listening, noise, nothing but damn noise. Five minutes goes by, and then 10. She's nowhere to be found, wiped clean off the map. All the while our distance closing, our engines humming at a tight click, 15 minutes, nothing, 20 minutes, nothing. And then all of a sudden as we close into the location, there she is, 1.4 nautical miles straight ahead. We're lined up for a head-to-head -head collision. We have less than a minute to decide what to do. So the commanding officers argue as I call out the distance. One nautical mile to impact. Should we dive? Too shallow. Should we turn? What if they see us on their sonar and they turn the same way? 0.5 nautical miles to impact. So our commanding officers decide to surface and turn hard. And the Grayling shoots its nose up towards the surface like a sperm whale ready to jump for the sky. 0.4 nautical miles to impact. The floor tilts and twists as officers grab onto the surrounding railings. 0.3. All I can do is close my eyes and pray that this works. 0.2. The crew falls silent. Brace for impact. And there's a moment of peace moment where everything is still a pure silence and then we lurch to the side officers hanging on for dear life this is it i thought this is how i go the officer who lost a submarine only to run his crew directly into it killing everybody i remember thinking this is how i'm going to be remembered in the history books this is what will survive me and then a deep low scraping sound metal on metal as our two ships braze past each other the bottom of our ship scraping across the top of theirs, a near miss, slightly less than a miss. 
and the crew erupts looking for damage reports, water fill in the engine room, something a fire, some sort of deathly damage to our ship. But as the minutes roll by, report after report comes in, and we're okay. So we surface, and after a time we check in with the Russians, and they're fine. Some minor exterior damage on both sides, but nothing major, nothing life-threatening. And I thank God every day that I didn't die there. That I wasn't responsible for the death of all those people. And each day that goes by, I blame myself less and less. That was a terrifying experience. One that will stay with me and haunt my dreams for the rest of my life. But this was far from the most frightening experience I had while serving on the Greyling.